All right, let's work through an example today. And so the example we're going to work through is fundamentally this system right here. So we're going to have uh, three. Li so we're going to have a fixed surface. We're going to have three linkages: one here, one coming down at an angle, and then this one, as I'll draw it, will be horizontal right across there. And essentially, what we're going to do is, given the knowledge of the rotation of one of these bodies, I think we're actually given the, the rotation of uh, this one right over here, we can find the angular velocity of this one and that one, because they all work together in a system. So here are our three bodies, once again, pinned at all joints. Uh, we're going to call this one over here point O, point A, point B, and point C. Given in the problem that the omega BC is equal to two radians per second, uh, and that's going to be in the k hat. Right? That's going to be, we use the right hand rule for all of our omegas, and so we're going to find there that, that wrapping our fingers around, our thumb is coming out of the board. Geometry of this system, we know that the distance between O and A is 0 0.1 meters. Uh, we know that this distance vertically between basically the horizontal line from O up to point B is point. 05 meters. We know that the length between B and C is 0 0.075 meters. And then we know the overall distance from O to point C is a quarter of a meter, 0.25 meters. <coughs> I think that that's it, right? Because with, with our, we know that, yeah, we can figure out the angle here basically of AB, also its length using the Pythagorean theorem. And so that's all we're given the problem. And we'll go ahead and assume that our x axes, we'll keep things standard, x and y going vertical straight up OA. So we are given omega BC find omega OA and omega AB. So what we've just learned, right, we just learned about this relative velocity equation that can relate the velocities of two points on the same body. And so we can write an equation that says the velocity of point A as a vector is equal to the velocity of point B as a vector plus the velocity of A in terms of B. Right? That's the most kind of general equation we can write. The same one we would have written um, back in chapter 12 if these were just two points that didn't happen to be on the same body. Um, but we, we learned that this can only be rotation. Um, we're also going to take a look at the fact that we can figure out the velocity of A relative to omega OA, right? If we want to solve for omega OA up here, why keep our equation relative to the velocity of point A? Let's go ahead and throw um, omega OA in the equation. We're also going to put um, VB in terms of its rotational, basically point B's rotational velocity. So let's go ahead and do those real quick. We can find that the velocity of A is equal to omega omega OA crossed with R of A in terms of O, right? Basically my position vector from O up there to point A. Uh, the reason that we know that it's equal to this and it doesn't have an additional translational term, or maybe someone can tell me, why do we know that the velocity of point A is only relative to the rotation of that body? It's fixed axis rotation, right? Point O can't move, so therefore that body can't translate. So we can also do the same thing. It's the same story over here for point B, where point C is our fixed point of rotation. Point B can only move around it. So we can say that the velocity of point B is equal to omega 
of BC crossed with R of B in terms of C. And then we also know from the equation that we derived on the previous page that the velocity of A relative to B is equal to omega of AB crossed with R of A in terms of B. So one thing to note right here is that the, the relative direction of this velocity vector has to match the relative direction of the position vector. Right, if I had this written, if I flipped this equation around and said VB is equal to VA plus VB relative to A, I'd then need to flip around the terms in this one and, have the, and I'd have VB in terms of A. I'd still have the same t term here for omega, right? Because that omega is the same for that whole little rigid body AB. I just have to flip this one around and write this one as RB in terms of A. Okay, so it has to be in the same order, the same velocity. So I'm going to take these three equations, put them all back here, uh, into my original one, and we're going to end up with an equation that looks like this. I'll try to keep the colors going here at least for a little bit so you can see where these are coming from. Omega OA crossed RA in terms of O is equal to the velocity of B, which I, I found here to be omega BC crossed with RB in terms of C plus omega a b crossed with r a slash b. So this isn't to say that every single one of these problems will only be in terms of rotation. It just happens that in this problem, the velocity of a and the velocity of b, because they're both on fixed axis rotation bodies, can be described with rotation. Therefore, that's what ends up in those spots. If we knew that A was only translating, right, then we'd end up with an, an equation over here that just had a linear translation of A. Same kind of thing over here with B. Let's go ahead and write out some of these vectors. So we know that R of A in terms of O, right, what is the vector of R A in terms of O? Well, we're going up 0 0.1 in the J hat. Right, this distance right here, from O up to point A, 0.1 meters in uh, the J hat. If we take a look here of R B in terms of C as a vector, it goes 0 0.075 to the left, so a negative 0 0.075 in the I hat meters. And then taking a look at the vector going from, or it's, it's a in terms of B, so it actually goes from B up here to A, R A in terms of B. We're going to go, let's see here, 0.25 minus this 0.075, so that ends up being a minus 0.175 in the I hat, and then we're going to go up, um, let's see, basically take 0.1 minus 0.05 gives us another 0.05, so plus 0.05 in the J hat, and that's also in meters. So this is going horizontally right from B relative to C, and so 0.5 in the I hat meters. Correct. Good catch. So now we need to go ahead and assign a direction. If we're going to take some cross products, we need to assign a direction here for omega OA and omega BC. Kind of like in statics where I love just assuming positive directions because then I don't have to worry about taking the right-hand rule and remembering this negative. I'm going to assume that uh, omega OA is going in a positive k-hat direction. I'm going to also assume that omega BC is also going in a positive k-hat direction, right? Because I need that direction in order to take basically this, this cross product right here. And so now that I have that, let's go ahead and write out this cross product. So we have a great big cross product that looks like this. We have an omega OA that's in the K hat, and we're going to cross that with a 0 0.1 J hat because that is RAL. That will equal my omega BC, as given in the problem, was 2 radians per second 
in the k-hat. I'll cross that with RBC, which is a negative 0 0.075 um, in the i-hat, right? The 2k that came from our initial, this right up here. And this is a, that's, a, that's an x next to it, right? Not a, it's, well, it's a, it's a cross, not, a, not just an x variable. So that's our known value of omega BC. And then we're going to add to that omega AB, which we also assume to be in a positive k hat. We're going to cross that with this RAB, negative 0 0.175 in the i hat plus 0 0.05 in the j hat. And all of those terms, because we're basically taking crosses of a, like a radiance per second times a distance, we're going to end up with basically velocity terms, right? Meters per, meters per second, distance per time. And so taking all these cross products, we get to remember all your, whatever tricks you like to use to take cross products. K hat crossed into a J hat gives us a negative I hat. Uh, I tend to like to take my negatives and put them with my numeric values because then I only have to remember how to cross like just the positive i hat, k hats, and j hats as opposed to like what's a negative j hat crossed with a positive i hat. Just take your, your j hat crossed with i hat and then put your negative back in later, right? And so in this case, it's a positive term, but then k hat crossed with j hat, like I said, so just simply this crossed with this is a negative i hat, therefore the term here will be a negative 0 0.1 omega OA in the i hat. Uh, the next term right here we end up with basically, so I have a k hat cross with an i hat, k hat cross with a positive i hat is a positive j hat, but I have a negative that comes from this negative right here, and so I end up with a negative uh, 0 0.15 times j hat. And I'll leave this last term just because there's two of them. I'll write them out and then we'll talk about them at the beginning of the class. The two terms are a negative omega a b times 0 0.175 in the j hat minus an omega a b times 0 0.05 in the i hat. The key thing to take away, at least to get, the, get started in this problem, is that the velocity here of point A has to be perpendicular to OA because it's fixed axis rotation. Therefore, this velocity either has to be going in this direction or in that direction, right? Both of those being perpendicular to OA. Same thing for point B. It either needs to be going up that direction or down this direction. In this case, because we know the direction of omega BC, we also know that it has to be going down because omega BC is rotating around this direction, so therefore that velocity has to be pointing down uh, along with it. And so essentially those two relationships are how we defined here the velocity of A and velocity of B because both of these are defined by fixed axis rotation. This relative velocity term, this is the one we just derived in the previous equation saying that Body AB is moving in general plane motion. It's rotating and it's translating, but one end relative to the other is just rotating around, right? A relative velocity, this relative velocity of A relative to B. We then can substitute in these three equations, this one to here, this one to there, and this one over there, and end up, and basically we just plug these in here into that top equation, and saying, all right, so these are the terms that define the motion of this system. Recalling that this only works if A and B are what? This only works if A and B are what? Absolute. Uh, it is absolute. That's, that, that'd be one, one of two correct answers. And that's what I was looking for, but it is a correct answer. On the, same body. on the same body. If these two points aren't on the same body, this equation won't work. It gets more complicated, basically, if these two points are not on the same body. Uh, and we'll cover that here within about a week. It's called uh, either relative or, um, uh, or rotating axes. So then we came up with a generalized equation. It was now time to start plugging things in. 
I went ahead and assumed that these two unknown omegas that we're solving for in the problem, I assumed that they were both in a positive k hat, just because I like positives. And so I assume they're in a positive k hat. If I get a negative value, I'll know that uh, my assumption was incorrect. And so then I started, I, I plug things here. Basically, this equation is the same thing as this equation. It's just plugging in all of these r vectors, all those position vectors. And then we, we then end up with a two equation, two unknown system. And I simplified it here to say that here's what that system looks like. How are we going to take this two equation, or excuse me, this two unknown, one, equa one vector equation relationship, and how are we going to solve for omega AB uh, and omega OA? It's a vector equation. That's the hint. There's I hats in there. There's J hats in there. Separate them, right? I've got I hats. I've got J hats. I know that they're independent. So let's take all the I hats, cluster them in one equation. Let's take all the J hats, cluster them in the other equation. And so here is our I hat equation. And that looks like negative 0 0.1 omega OA. So this is all going to be I hats in this equation. It is equal to the only other I hat term is negative omega AB times 0, 0, 0.05. So I can't solve that one yet. Let's take a look at the J hat equation. And it looks like 0, right? There's no J hats on the left hand side of that equal sign. We have a negative 0 0.15, and then a plus negative or a minus uh, omega a b times 0 0.175. So from this equation, omega a b is the only unknown. We find out um, that it is equal to a negative 0 0.857. All, omegans, all omegas are in radians per second. We then can plug this back into here and find that omega OA is equal to a negative 0 0.428 radians per second. And so if we were just simply asked to find the magnitude, right, either one of these magnitudes not with the negative value would work. If you're asked to find the vector or the direction, we would say, therefore, Omega OA vector is equal to 0 0.428 radians per second in the negative k hat, because I assumed initially in the positive k hat. And we can do the same thing for AB. Omega AB vector equal to 0 0.857 radians per second, also in the negative k hat, opposite the direction that we initially assumed. So these would be uh, our vector answers for that problem. Questions on relative velocity, right? Break this down. Break it into pieces. Realize that when you write this general form equation, your, your relative velocity equation, um, you're likely to find your velocity for A, your velocity from B, and also that relative velocity term from different places in your problem, right? So just go hunting out, how do I find velocity, how do I find that velocity, then put them all together. Um, paying close attention to your cross products and making sure you get the correct signs, positive or negative, out of those cross products. Then we split it into independent equations uh, and solve it out. So this one was done using um, Cartesian coordinate systems, right, x, y. We could also do this um, using tangent normal and or uh, polar coordinate system, or I guess in 2D we call it more of a cylindrical coordinate system uh, if we wanted to. Any questions on relative velocity? We're going to be using, like I said, we're going to be using this idea of relative velocity for most of the rest of class. Um, and as you can see, because you can break it down into pieces, instead of having to write this universal equation like we did for absolute velocity, it's a little easier. I mean, it's, it's more pieces overall, but each piece is a little more well-confined, or it's simpler. And so uh, we can get it into a form that it's easily, um, easily solvable. Yes, Nate. It's a great question. So the question is, is why are both of these omegas in the k-hat direction when we solve for them, one from an i-hat equation and one from a j-hat equation? The bottom line is, is that in a 2D problem, 
can you have any omegas in the i hat or the j hat? No, right? Everything's rotating basically in the, in the plane of the paper. And so all that's going to be either in a positive k hat or in a negative k hat, right? So that's, that's more the kind of the, the spatial response to the question. The algebraic response to that question is that if we wanted to go ahead and put in, and I'll go ahead and list them in here. So if I listed in all the i hat terms, which in this case is going to be two of them, and then I divide each side of this equation by i hat, don't those go away, right? And so no longer is that a, an i, I mean, the terms came from a x direction only or an i hat equation. But the relationship here between negative 0.1 omega OA and negative omega AB 0.05 isn't dependent on those i hats or j hats. It's just a, an algebraic relationship. 